Hello, Charlottesville. I'm so happy to be here with you today as your first speaker. What I'm going to talk to you about is sacrifice, because the issue that I work on, climate change, is almost always portrayed as one. We are bombarded by the threat of catastrophe time and time again. I read negative research, reports, news, and science on almost a daily basis. And on top of that, many of our leaders deny it's even real. Some of them cling to their own self-interest. And many deny or don't even recognize that there's something that we should be doing about it. What I'm going to tell you about today is why I think that's the case, why I think you might feel guilty every time you read about climate change, why I think the youth are protesting in the streets, but more importantly, I want to leave you with the solutions that give me hope, that will put us on the right side of history and allow us to redefine the narrative around climate change to see it for what it really is. I can really relate to the youth marching in the streets. What we're seeing from young people today is unprecedented. Millions of children skipping school because of their concern about the planet and the world that they're going to inherit, and the adults of today being complicit in its demise. What they're expressing is anger, fear, and hopelessness. And as I see them march every Friday, I realize that I feel those same emotions too. What young people have said uh, has given them the courage to stand up and speak up for what's right. And what they've done uh, is that they've had the courage to say what I haven't had the courage to say to others or even to myself, that despite having spent 11 years in United Nations climate change negotiations debating and discussing global climate policy solutions, that we're still not doing enough, that we're failing, that we're pursuing incremental action in the face of exponentially accelerating problems. What young people are calling on is for us to fundamentally change our model of development and how we grow as a society. What they're asking us to do is to listen to the science. And what the science tells us is that globally, greenhouse gas emissions need to peak in 2020, that's next year, and rapidly decline towards net zero by 2050, and then need to be negative thereafter. That means that by then, we need to be removing more carbon out of the atmosphere than we're emitting. That means we can't be pouring gasoline into our cars anymore. We can't be burning coal as our main source of electricity anymore. We have to fundamentally change the entire energy system upon which our economy is built. But I also wanted to share with you something that you may not know about climate change. And that's that climate change and nature are linked. We know today that we can't solve climate change without nature. And the reason for that is simple. There is more carbon stored in our trees, plants, roots, and soils than in the entire atmosphere. And when we burn, damage, degrade, and destroy our natural ecosystems and our land, much of their stored carbon is emitted. These impacts are so significant that a third of the solution to climate change comes from nature. And we know what we need to do about this. We need to protect our critical natural ecosystems, in particular tropical forests, peatlands, and coastal mangrove forests. We need to restore the millions of acres around the world that have been cleared or degraded. And we need to fund these solutions so that we create green economies that don't rely and depend on the destruction of nature. If we do these three things, we'll have a third or more of the solution to climate change. But anytime we talk about these solutions or any climate solution, they're almost always portrayed as a sacrifice. Climate change is no longer an issue of the future or an issue for some far away place. Climate change is an issue for today. The climate has changed and it will continue to change beyond our control unless we act now. And acting now means that something has got to give. It means we have to sacrifice. And so I think a lot about the concept of sacrifice, the act of giving up something treasured or valued for the greater good. A difficult and scary yet necessary decision where the benefits outweigh the costs. Ancient traditions would sometimes sacrifice human lives to please their gods. 
parents sacrifice their own needs for their children's futures. And so we see sacrifice around us almost every day, big and small. But, and when we talk about climate change, it's almost always portrayed as the ultimate sacrifice. It's one that's become merged in our psyche. So much so that climate change and acting on climate change has almost become anti-American, an offense to our right to grow, to make our own decisions, to express and portray the fullest extent of our talents. That goes against the very principles of the American dream, our right to build and architect a future that isn't constrained by anything other than the limits we place in ourselves. And so when climate activists tell you to fly less, eat less meat, use less plastic, buy less things, not buy that gas guzzler, but buy a Tesla instead, it's an offense to what we've been taught our whole lives, that we can dream without limits. But what if confronting climate change doesn't have to be a sacrifice? What if we don't have to choose between technology, growth, and a secure future? And so I'd like to propose three new ways that we can look at climate change. The first is through conscious growth. Acting on climate change doesn't mean that we stop growing. It means that we tap into that human instinct to grow, but use that to redesign the system that created climate change. It means we use our ingenuity, our talents, our innovation, big data and artificial intelligence to increase connectivity between sectors and to make smarter decisions about how we use scarce natural resources. What could be more American than that? It means that we have to be more mindful of one another and our experience as humans. I'm a meditator, and one of the things that I've realized is that climate change connects us all. It's the greatest equalizer. Every corner of the world is experiencing some impact of climate change, whether it's torrential monsoon floods in India, where I was born, or unprecedented wildfires in California, where I grew up. If we can be mindful of how climate change is affecting every single person on this planet, then we can also accept our personal responsibility as part of the problem, but also part of the solution. It also will help us connect and relate with one another in a more effective way when we talk about climate change, because each of us has a personal story and a personal experience about climate change. And lastly, on natural capital. The thing that strikes me the most about climate change is how close we are to the solutions. By preserving and valuing the undeniable beauty and value of nature, we, it gets us one third of the way closer to solving climate change, but also gives us a clean supply of water, a free medicine cabinet, and a sponge that can soak up all of the water from storms. By looking at climate change in this way, we can dream. In fact, we can dream more than we've ever had to before. It's not just about protection. It's about restoration of our communities, our land, and our spirits. It's not just about offsetting one small part of your footprint. It's about entirely reimagining and redesigning the entire system that made climate change possible in the first place. By reimagining sacrifice, we can understand and see all of the opportunity and everything that we gain by making those seemingly difficult decisions. If we take some time off to reconnect with nature, does that not bring peace and calm to an otherwise hectic life? If you eat a little bit less meat and it causes deforestation to go down, how is that a sacrifice when we gain so much from nature? So the next time that climate change scares you, or it seems like an impossible, insurmountable, or imposing feat that will require you to sacrifice so much, I hope that we all can see the opportunity and the humanity in making those decisions. The right here, the right now, not the theoretical or the imagined. Acting on climate change doesn't have to be an offense to our rights or a loss of anything. So let's stop talking about it that way. This is already happening, but I need all of you to be part of this new climate revolution because the next 10 years of our lives are going to be the most important for any of us. Let me repeat that. The next 10 years of all of our lives are going to be the most important. Let's turn our anger our fear and our hopelessness into determination. Determination that we have everything it takes to solve climate change, right here, right now, within nature, within humanity, and within ourselves. Thank you.